All right, what's going on guys? It's Epoxy, and here in this video, I'll be showing you how to get one of the most powerful swords known as the Sword of Night and Flame in Elden Ring. One might even call it overpowered. And while this is primarily for magic users due to the requirements and the fact that you'll be using and abusing the FP consuming skill it has to offer, this thing is an absolute beast if you can use it. I'm talking game changing. If you're looking for an easy mode in the game, here it is. What makes it even better is that it's not that difficult to grab, as you can always just run past the enemies in this higher level location that we'll be going to. So to begin, you'll want to make your way to Caria Manor. It's a castle located at the top of Liernia West, and there are no item or story requirements to enter this location. You'll need to make your way throughout Caria Manor until you unlock the Manor Lower Level Site of Grace. If you've already unlocked this Site of Grace, you can go ahead and fast travel, making this an absolute breeze for you. This particular site of grace will be located in a church, as you can see on screen. From here, you'll want to make your way out the main door and down the stairs, where you'll come across an elevated pathway. Just run across until you trigger the first set of enemies, which you can either fight them, like me, or run past them. I'd suggest keeping some range though with something like the old reliable glintstone pebble, as they have a few different forms of attack, that being melee, crossbows, and glintstone attacks. After the first set of enemies, a second set will be triggered at this first section. Again, you can either run past them or take them out. After that last set of enemies, we'll be avoiding further confrontations the rest of our way to the secret room. Just continue to follow the path up the left side to the second section. And then on the way to the third section, you'll be able to see down to the left a platform that you can drop down to. Just come up to this gap in the railing and jump down to the platform. From here, head north to the broken section of the wall, and you'll see another platform that you can drop down to. Go ahead and drop, and from here, head over to the hole with a ladder and climb your way down into the secret room. This is a room that is blocked off by a locked door, which we'll be able to unlock from this side to open up another pathway through Caria Manor. Once at the bottom, just head to the opposite end of the room where you'll see a chest and the door we can unlock from this side. Go ahead and open the chest, and within, you'll find the Sword of Night and Flame. And while you're here, be sure to unlock the door to open up this pathway, and you're now good to leave the area. You'll now have the Sword of Night and Flame in your inventory, which as I alluded to in the beginning is primarily for magic oriented builds. As well, it will require 12 in both strength and dexterity, the big requirement is 24 in both intelligence and faith. The good news is that it scales off of four stats. It's D tier scaling for intelligence and faith, and E tier scaling for strength and dexterity. You'll see that this sword does physical, magic, and fire damage, and while this sword is still great to swing around, the reason this thing is overpowered is the skill attacks, as it has not one, but two very powerful attacks that give it its name. That's thanks to the skill Night and Flame Stance, which is why it cannot be infused with Ashes of War or boosted by magic or consumables. As for upgrading the sword, it will require somber smithing stones, which aren't too hard to come by as you progress further into the game and explore some higher level areas. You'll likely already have a few on hand if you already have the stats to use the sword. Now, just to give you a bit of a demonstration, here is what the knight skill attack performs like. As you can see, this inflicts massive damage and has quite a good range, and we'll be able to one-shot a wide range of heavier mobs and will do significant damage to bosses. Then there is the flame attack. Here's a demonstration. So again, another great skill attack. I found that the knight attack is better in most cases, as it is great for taking on heavier enemies one-on-one. -on -one. This includes bosses, but it can still hit more than one enemy if they're lined up. The flame attack, on the other hand, is great for crowds or any enemies including bosses that are weaker to fire, as it will still do a massive amount of damage, but it requires you to be in closer range, so you'll be way more vulnerable. I've been having an absolute blast using the sword after being absolutely punished with a melee focus build for the longest time, so I'd love to know your thoughts on the Sword of Night and Flame down in the comment section below. But that's it for this video, hope you all enjoyed, if you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe to join the good fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to stay updated in all of my future videos. It would be super, greatly appreciated as always, and until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.